I quickly realized that I had married a prosecutor. <laughs> um, in that, in no, I think a lot of guys in no time do. at all, you could you could not only bring up a specific issue that was the issue at hand, but then bringing yeah, a ton of 10, supportive evidence other things. <laughs> um, and a and a log, a history yeah. of itemized details yes. and yeah. dates and times, that... of which I completely forgot. And I was just like guilty as charged, yeah. you know, and and that that's where you're like want to come in. But and also defend. sometimes you weren't guilty. Like as women, I can speak for us, but we tend to just hold it all and like have our list of what you've done and it could be five years ago. Yeah. And just that stuff just comes out like daggers and yeah. that's very unhealthy. I think one of the difficult things that I didn't expect about marriage uh, when we first got married and probably like into the first two, three years of marriage, anytime I would bring an, anything to you, like something I wanted to tell you or something, a conversation I had or something somebody did, you wanted to fix it. No matter what it was, you had to fix it. And I didn't need you to fix anything. That drove me crazy. And we fought a lot about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm still very much tempted to fix it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it drove me crazy. Because I just wanted, you just want him to listen. You don't you don't want him to like, you need to do this. You need to do that. They need to do this. You Like, just make it all better. You don't need to do that. You just need to sit there and listen. Yeah, I guess that is similar to what was hard for me about marriage that was surprising was, first of all, it was surprising how hard it was to fight to have disagreements and arguments because I assumed that we could just do that without it getting into a bad place or without either one of us getting angry or saying something we didn't mean. But typically we were, we were fighting. They were real hard words that were being said and I didn't yeah. know how to respond to that. I didn't know how to, so I naturally wanted to fix it and I wanted to do whatever I could to just create peace. And sometimes there was going to be no peace until there was time and there was um you know time to cool down and chill so that was one thing that was really tough and the other thing that was really hard for me uh was that i used to think i knew what she was feeling before i ever really she would ever say it because i would try to read her face or her body language or i would just and i would make an assumption based upon what i thought i was seeing and then I was all, I was already fighting with her or fixing the problem with her that I was so sure was the issue or was the problem. And then when I actually asked her and let her talk or let her share what was really on her mind, I was surprised and realized that I was doing I was making assumptions that weren't true. Um, and that I never I don't know. It took years for me to really begin to figure out what your cues were and mm -hmm. also just listen better period. Yeah. For me, I knew I needed to listen more than I spoke. And I, I needed not to immediately jump in and defend myself, which is the biggest temptation, especially if there's an accusation or something that's being brought up that you can already tell that there's been a misunderstanding. Um, you immediately want to be like, no, you're wrong. Or no, you missed the you're completely misinterpreting what you thought I was thinking you're doing. Mm -hmm. So the temptation typically is just to jump in. And I realized quickly that that was very unproductive, that to defend myself was not the way to go about it. And to get upset and offended was also part of the reason why I wanted to defend myself. So I had to realize, like, I don't need to be offended or upset about something even though she's acting really angry or is coming at me strong. I don't need to do that because right now I know that she's she's missing a piece of the puzzle so I can just stay calm and then explain. Now, the things that I definitely know that she was right about and that I felt caught red-handed per se or um, she, you know, I didn't notice that I was doing or something that she was revealing to me that when I heard it I knew was true, then I'm embarrassed and I still want to I still want to like explain myself and I still want to apologize and I want to fix it. And the timing of her bringing it up and me wanting to do that, those things don't always match. Usually you have to wait 
And uh, for us, I learned that like I need to let you cool down. You need you need to know that you've been able to say what you need to say, and that I've heard you, and that I understand. Mm -hmm. And then let you kind of cool off until you're ready to be like, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> and then once you're like in a place where you're ready for me to respond, then I can be like, well. And typically, I've had I, what's worked well for me is just owning the truth in what I heard. And being like, it is true what you said. I have done so and so, or been so and so, and hearing you say that and knowing it affected you the way it has has made me upset too. Mm -hmm. And I I want to change that. So help. And sometimes I've had to ask you to help. So those responses have been really valuable. Um, I think it took me a long time to realize you can't start an argument and finish an argument right then and there and i just want to start it finish it move on um you need time like you need me to not what about this what about that what about like just come at you um which is what i did a lot in the beginning because i just want to start and finish something so um i had to learn that you needed space and that space didn't mean that it wasn't going to be resolved. It didn't mean that we weren't going to go back and talk about it. It just meant you may process slower than I do in that moment, or I may process too fast mm -hmm. and not really understand what we're arguing about or how to fix what we're really arguing about in a productive and healthy mm -hmm. way. I just wanted it quick. So like with kids, we have kids, we can't always resolve something right then and there. And we we often have to take our mm. argument to our bedroom and leave the family area. Um, or, you know, you kind of have to read your situation. Like if you're out at dinner and he ticks you off, like that is not the time to argue. Wait till you get in the car. Then you can have a long drive home. We've had some of those. Um, you know, you have to become aware of what your reaction is going to be in the moment, you have to kind of stop and ask yourself, like, am I going to flip out right now? Can I be a little bit snarky and still move on? And like, you have to, you got to be able to control yourself. And being able to control yourself is very difficult. Depending on how dumb yeah. I've been. Yeah. Or well, me, like even, I mean, oh, yeah. I make you mad. You can it's be not really, just, you can not be really just dumb. the men. It's no. not just the men. <laughs> Women can make men mad and oh, it's okay. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was going to say just to your point about like timing, um, I, I've been around a lot of guy friends who are like, oh man, I can't be around my wife like around the time of her month, the, her time of the month because she's extra moody and whatever else. Mm -hmm. But what I've been impressed with is like guy we guys we, we can be moody like that on a daily or on a weekly basis we don't have just one time of the month where we can be moody and you've been really good at like being able to read when i'm ready for a criticism or when i'm not based upon yeah. my energy level or my temperament or how much how irritated i am about other things yeah. and you'll navigate and kind of just put a little like reminder in in your little ledger of things that need to be discussed and come back to it at a time where you're like, oh, he's really chipper. He's in a good mood today. Not that you want to rain on the parade, but you know, he's probably more able to handle what I'm about to share with him. And he needs to hear it. And that's been really cool to see. And uh, and I've appreciated that. And then and then oh I've gotten I've gotten the criticism from you too at times that like, oh, you're never ready to talk about something. And I'm like, oh, that's fair. That's fair because I, I want to typically push it off because I yes. also am more of a peacekeeping personality. I don't want to have conflict if I can avoid it. I tend to, but I also want to reconcile. So it's like if I know it's me and I'm the problem, I'm probably going to push it off a little bit more. If I know that it's a larger problem outside that we can solve, then I'm like, let's reconcile that right now. Let's get right on that thing. Well, you just so said something. Funny. That's part of it. I think we've learned is you need to learn yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you need to learn how you handle conflict, how you handle personalities, how you handle love and how you want to be loved. Like you have to learn yourself to be a good mate for your person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
there are times where depending on the situation and what's appropriate, um, you know, one of us usually will will step up and be like, here's what I think we need to do, or this is a decision we need to make. And we typically agree, even if it's, I, we really haven't had that a whole lot because we typically, one of us will always choose to take the step forward mm -hmm. um, and suggest it to the other. It's not as simple as the Bible says the man is the head of the house in our family because mm -hmm. we're always doing this dance of wanting to serve one another and looking out for what we each want. So I could make a decision that's just like, and throw down the authority card, I suppose, and I trust that Casey would follow that lead because I've seen her do that even when she didn't have to many, many times. But what's been really cool is that she's she's, typic she's typically trying to make the best decision because she knows she wants to serve me, and I'm also doing the same for her. So any, any suggestion that I'm making is tempered by the idea of, I hope that this serves her best and that she'll like this best. And then when I say it, usually she'll hear it and be like, that is fair and agree to it or she'll do the same for me. So we're always trying to do the dance of serving one another and looking out for one another so that neither one of us have to come across very authoritative. And there's also, I, I don't wanna to steal too much, but there's also categorical things that we'll make decisions on. So based upon categories, things that one of us is better at, one of us has more expertise or comfort in, then we'll defer to one another naturally anyway in that department. And it's gone really, really well. Thanks for watching another episode of Midweek at Your House. So what now? There's a whole community with our virtual church whose purpose is to love God and love people better every day. We would love to have you jump into that. Tune in this weekend right here on our YouTube channel for New Life at Your House. There are two services at 9 and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where you can know God better through music, teaching, and more opportunities. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on. We'll see you soon.